you know, we got to quit meeting like this. People are going to start talking. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is July 2nd. It is Tuesday. Now, you know what we do here. We like to focus in on hot penny stocks. Stocks that I come across through the day as I'm trading penny stocks. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every single market. And I'm always looking for hot stocks. And normally I find them when I'm looking at the charts. I can see heat in a chart rather quickly. And I can look at a lot of charts in a little amount of time. Once I find a chart that has heat, I'll match that up to a hot catalyst. I go through the press releases, filings, looking for news, not just over the last couple of days, but over the last 30 days if you can't find anything. A hot chart doesn't have to have fresh, hot news. Even stale news that has any heat on it can get that chart moving again. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I've got one for us right now. And I just took a look at the chart and she's taking some aftermarket activity. She started to move pretty bloody quick. I hope I got to this one in time. This is Multi Metaverse Holdings, ticker MMV. She finished the day at, we're not going to call it that. <laughs> we'll call it 67 cents. And she was up about 13% today. Now she is a hot penny stock on the NASDAQ. I'm liking these penny stocks on the major exchanges. You know, the main reason I like them isn't because the transactions are free. That's nice. It isn't because there's more volume, lots more volume up on the major exchange and a lot more money. That's great too. No, the real reason I like it is because there's a lot more rules up there. They have to answer up to a ton of agencies overlooking them. Down in the OTC, they're getting away with way too much and we're the ones that pay for it. Not to mention, you get to trade these pre-market, aftermarket, like right now when the stock is moving. You can cash in on surges. You can't do that on the OTC market. So they tell us here that the company is a shell company, that she's not making any money right now. And I'm going to presume that's probably right. But I do have some financial information to share with you. It's a little old, but it's the only information we got. Now we are looking at this because of the chart. That's my primary focus here. Her chart, that perfect atypical breakout setup. I share this with you over and over and over again. When you got your 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious like a ski slope, your price deep up underneath it, and then the price starts to turn up to cut through that 200, this is when you get your breakouts. And that's exactly what we're looking at. And she is doing it right now. Multi metaverse. We have no description here. There's really not a great description in the news press. So we're just going to dive on over to their website. Now they're calling themselves seven doc over here. So we're going to go with that. Seven doc was founded in 2013, but they came on the market January, 2023 by a group of idealists who believe in living is to change the world. The studio has begun producing animations, you can think of them as cartoons, though they're very sophisticated. Under the original brand of 82 World since 2013, and created multiple original IPs such as 82 World, Nico Album, and Blade Avengers. It has gradually grown into a platform that integrates original animation creation, comics, merchandise, and mobile games, and become an iconic ACG studio with a huge fan base, in particular among the younger generation in China. That's the case because they are dealing primarily with cartoons, though they don't like to use that word. Animations is what they use over and over again. Now, their primary animation is A2 World. They are building a conglomerate around this thing, and it has been around for a while. Right now, they are kicking off other projects as well. One of those new projects is Nico Album. And we're not going to focus in on it because what they're doing there, they're doing here. So you just know they're duplicating their efforts everywhere. They tell us here that 7Doc has been continuously working on A2 World and produced four seasons of animations, which was broadcasted on over 110 television channels in mainland China. And online, they have had about a billion hits since 2022. A2 World has gained a large following and ranked among the top viewed Chinese animation brands. With original animation becoming a cultural phenomenon in China, 7Doc is also expanding that presence to the global market. Now, because they have such a huge following, think about that. They've had four seasons. 
Well, this is coming back week after week after week. You are growing your audience to like, love your branding. They're going to want more than just the show. So they started diversifying, capitalizing on all that they could do to pander to their consumers, their audience. They started making more mobile games. They call this one Project A. Project A is the company's major game update to one of the existing live games based on the A2 World brand. Project A combines new storylines with the main storyline of the animation series and incorporates animated content which can help fans build a stronger bond with animation. Good, smart, but the natural progression is to move to merchandise. Merchandise, when you're talking about kids, the world is your oyster. You can do anything with that branding. You can put it on toothpaste, clothing, comic books, dolls. I mean, you name it. If it's for a child, they'll want it. Well, they tell us here that the company has developed over 2,000 different merchandise items since 2017, including comic books, action figures, stuffed dolls, apparels, costumes, trading cards, and a lot, lot more. Now, the last thing I want to share with you here is what they call UGC, User Generated Content. What their fan base is posting online about them, wherever they are posting it. They monitor that because it's a good token sign of how popular you are. Well, they tell us here that as of September 2022, A2 World, the animation, received more than 500 posts per day on Billy Billy. This is another Chinese company, which is too on the open market. They are ranked first among Chinese animation brands. And in addition to that, A2 World Animation was the most popular Chinese animation on, let's call that D and K. As of September 2022, receiving a total of 14.8 billion hits. Holy cow, that's a lot of attention that they're getting. And this is their primary focus is A2 World. But they do have Nico album. They're doing the same thing over there. And they've got other projects that they are now starting to launch that we're not going to focus in on. I'm going to leave that due diligence to you. So what was the company doing today when it comes to relative volume? Not very good. Thank God we had an increase in uh, gains at least. She dropped in her volume. From 4.6 million down to 1.4 million. Well, it's a little scary. Share structure. Well, look at that. Bonus. We have a very, very low float. As a matter of fact, I'll go as far as to call it a super duper low float. A low float starts at 10 million. Now, to be completely honest, I don't have a clue what the float is. Well, I do have a clue. It's less than 2.5 million. It can't be higher than the outstanding share count. So between management and what's out here in the open market, a total of 2.5 million shares, which means when this company, let's look at that uh, volume. The other day they did four and a half million. Well, that means that they would have to sell every single share twice. If they do 10 million, they're going to have to sell every single share four times in one day. They're going through the entire outstanding share count, or at least a float, which can cause the stock to run fast because some people aren't going to sell. They're going to hold them for whatever reason, for whatever amount of time, they're not going to be available right now. So there is going to be limited numbers of shares, which is going to create a supply and demand issue. And it's going to look like a short squeeze because you're going to see the price start going parabolic and she'll run and you better be selling when you see a stock going parabolic because she's going to run out of fuel up at the top. That's a rocket stock and she's going to come crashing back down to earth. Sell up here, take some profit, doesn't have to be at the top. When she falls back down, oh, you can buy it at a beautiful price with all the money you just made up there. Market cap for MMV, we are at about one and a half million dollars. Financials. Well, as I said, the company isn't making any money. These are old. 2021 um, quarterlies, they only go up to 2022. However, I did get some information. It was in an article. Somebody had wrote this on, uh, I think it was the 14th of June. And I wanted to use it, but every time I put the site up, a pop-up came up that took control. And it's like I couldn't deal with it. So I just took a picture of the information I wanted to share with you. They tell us that in the first half of 2023, 
The company reported a total net revenue of $5.5 million, driven by its mobile game segment, which saw a 40% increase of revenue to $2.1 million. So just the mobile games got them virtually 40% of all their revenues. The company's cost of revenues decreased by 26% to $3.1 million, which is basically increasing their profit margin. That's giving them more money to keep. Additionally, the company is exploring opportunities in the metaverse, including the development of an A2 meta planet and an open world role playing simulation game that emphasizes user generated content and high interactivity. And we know that's going to be hot. The metaverse got put on hold when COVID came around. I don't know where it would have gone if COVID didn't pop up the way it did, but we're going to get back on that track. It is being built silently. There's not as much attention being focused on it as there was initially, but it is being built and it's going to come to light and we're all going to be a part of it one way or another. Let's come on down to those disclosures now. All right, we've got a lot of SC-13Gs here. Now, an SC-13G and an SC-13D, these are when new owners come on board. One is a silent investor and one is an active investor. He's actually going to have a voice in the company. When you see an A at the end of it, it means it's been amended. They had to fix something in it, so they resubmitted it. You can see we had a whole bunch of them here. Well, there's two of them right there. These two, uh, they seem to be investment companies. One bought about 9.9% .9 of the company. You go over 10%, it's an entirely different ball game. And the other one bought like 7.5% of the company. Outside of that, we don't have anything here to consider. So let's go take a look at that news now. We have two pieces of news I want to focus in on. One came out April 23rd. One came out May 20th. There is no more news. There's nothing recent here. There is no catalyst, not a recent catalyst. It is a catalyst nonetheless because it's still active. Even though the news is old, what they were talking about hasn't fully occurred yet. So let's jump into these two pieces of news. The one that came out April 23rd, the company received a notification from NASDAQ dated April 17th that they had not been meeting the minimum bid price requirement of $1. We are currently, oh, it's going up. We are currently at 71 cents. Also, they are not in compliance with the minimum market cap. They're supposed to be at 35 million. We just looked at it. What was it? 1.5 million. Whoa. They have to make a deal and bring assets into the company to fix this problem. Now, the $1, they can't fix that either unless they do a reverse stock split. And while you're in the midst of a merger, which is what you're going to see in the next piece of news, they can't go altering their share count. Things have to stay the way they are. So they're in hot water right now until these things get adjusted. We can bid that price up. It is our job. We get this up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. It has to close over a dollar. They will be out of hot water. No more problems. If not, We'll have to see what they're going to do. They have a deadline till October 14th to get these things taken care of. So it looks like we're going to have enough time. And I can shed a little more light on that fact looking at this news. This came out May 20th. Remember that date because you're going to see a humongous jump on the chart when this news came out. This is the only news that came out about this merger. Now, normally, when news comes out about a merger or an acquisition, the first time we hear it, the virgin hearing, that is the biggest jump you get on the charts. It is massive. Then she comes down. Then they sign a letter of intent down the road. You get a nice bounce out of that, but nothing compared to the first. And then three, four months down the road, they finally close it and you get a blip, a hiccup. That's it. I'm not quite sure why that happens. I think strange is more enticing than familiar. So we normally get the biggest runs first time we hear it. As you're going to see, this one had a nice run. Well, this is what came out that day. Multi Metaverse Holdings announced today that it has entered into a non-binding term sheet for the acquisition of 100% of Bowong Technology and its subsidiaries by the issuance of shares. So they're going to pay for this deal all through shares of the company. That explains why they can't do anything about the stock price right now. The amount 
of which will be determined based on further due diligence and negotiations. They're going to take 90 days to do this. Well, this is May 20th that this came out. That's going to take it to August 20th. So they have until October 14th to get these problems fixed. And the offset date to close this merger is August 20th. They would be getting in just in time. They also tell us that the consideration shares shall be subject to a lockup period of one year, which means all the shares that Bowong Technology is going to get, they can't sell any of them for a year. No ifs, ands, or buts. So you don't have to worry about a pump and dump here. The stock's starting to run high and all of a sudden they start selling their shares, capitalizing on it. Nope, they're going to miss anything that happens from here to then. The company was founded in 2022. Bowong AI is an artificial intelligence company specializing in e-commerce solutions. Bowong AI focuses on providing innovative solutions for marketing content creation and its distribution outreach in the e-commerce industry using AI technology. This is new folks. Listen to how we explain this. This is not just e-commerce. The core advantage of Bowong lies in its self-developed AI model specifically tailored for e-commerce content creation overcoming limitations of time and budget associated with human resources. In other words, it can do a lot more work in a lot less time than any humans could possibly do. According to Bo Wong's management team, its AI powered content distribution algorithm allows for the rapid production and dissemination of personalized marketing content across multiple platforms, enabling vendors to quickly expand their market reach and precisely target buyers. Think of it like this. When I make these videos, they take me about three to four hours to make. Then when I'm all done making them, I got to post that I've made it so that you know where to go to see it. Well, I just don't post on Twitter. I've got about 25 other places I post it and I have to go to every single place, post it and then go to the next place and post it. That's more time. This does it like that. They tell us here that Bo Wong AI is able to produce and distribute abundant and personalized marketing contents in different forms for the goods across all platforms in a very short time. Recently, Bo Wong AI has completed its series of AI funding for several million dollars. They've got several million dollars and these proceeds will be used to further develop its models and technologies in the e-commerce field, expand its markets into Asia and North America and recruit additional top talents. And last but not least, the CEO of MMV says, we believe that e-commerce related AI will be one of the earliest niche markets resulting in commercial success in the AI revolution. This is something new. Again, with AI, you never know what to expect completely. Besides the e-commerce aspect, Bo Wong has the expertise in image and video generative as well, which will be a great synergy for MMV's animation and gaming business. It's a perfect blend here. This merger is bringing in a company that's got something new and fresh. They've got this e-commerce deal, but it's more than just e-commerce. It creates and dispenses all of this content all over the internet very, very quickly. Plus, they work with imaging and videos, which is what this company already does. So this looks like a deal that was made to be. And the chart looks like it's responding to it nicely, even after market. Let's do some charting now and try to have some fun doing it. We're over here at my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We are taking a look at multi-metaverse holdings, ticker MMV. Got her opened up to a six-month, four-hour chart. We got a high here of $2.05, and right below it on this run, we have our low of $0.45. Cents. And these are 52-week highs and lows, all based around this one extreme run. And this is the one that came out when the news came out about the merger. She ran here from roughly 50 cents all the way up to two bucks. 400% run, folks. Folks, this is the sort of run you sell on the way up. You don't hold everything all the way to the top because you don't know where the top is. When you hit 100%, you should be thinking about selling something. At least 25%. That'll give you half of your investment back. 
If you sell half of what you're holding, you'll get all your investment back. You'll have just that much invested still, but it's all free. Now you're working on house money. You're not taking any risk anymore. When it goes up another 100%, sell some more. Put some more money in your pocket. Minimize your risk. Don't let greed force you to hold everything to the top and then lose it when you come tumbling down super duper fast. Now we've had other jumps in this downtrend. Both of these jumps were over 100%. So this thing does move because she has a very low float. Now let's zoom in on this area right here because this is what caught my attention. After this big run, she came back down. She tried to hang on to the 200, but she couldn't do it. Fell up underneath it, and she just kind of bobbled around through here because the SMAs weren't in proper place. Once they got into proper place, she started to move. Now, what we need to know is where is she going to move to? So, what I'm going to do, because this is so prominent, this is the biggest move she's had in a year. It's got our 52-week low and our 52-week high off of it. I'm going to use this to get my SNRs, supports and resistances, as I normally do. I'm going to grab my Fibonacci and I'm going to start at the top so my lines go up above this. I'm going to poke it and then I'm going to come down to the very beginning of this surge right down here on our 200 haul and poke it there. Now, what we've got here are supports and resistances that are figured out algorithmically. They are not attached to any historical price points but that doesn't make them any less valid. We're going to use these to trade on because the price is going to respect these. You'll see it when it starts to move. And I like the fact that our first one here is down underneath. This gives us a support to fall down to and bounce off of. Now, let me back this up because I get the feeling we actually have another support resistance here. We darn sure do. Right in this region, right there. I'm looking here for, oh, let me grab this, hide my wrong line. Right here, I can see she is sitting, all this, all this up here is just laying on that. Then she came down to that low and took off and she's, look at that. I didn't even look at that. She is actually tapping that, that resistance right there perfectly. Now, as I was saying, she is set up right now. Let me zoom in even more. This is my perfect setup for an atypical breakout. You have your 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious. And as you can see, that is falling fast and furious. But when you come in real close, it doesn't look very steep, but it is. My price is right up underneath the 200 moving average, but above the 200 haul. Now, most of you have no clue what I'm talking about here unless you watch my videos. This purple line that turns blue is my 200 haul. This is a lot like your 200 day moving average. Both take 200 days of prices, average them all together. But the 200 haul puts more weight and credence on current prices. It's actually relating to the price more. This is actually a, a buddy to the price. And you will see that relationship over and over again on the charts. The price likes to buddy up to the 200 haul and use it to catapult herself through the 200 day moving average. Once I seen this turn blue here, folks, I knew we were in good shape and take notice what's going on here. It was purple. She was down here under the 200. Soon as it went totally flat and started to turn blue, boom, you had your initial breakout and that took off and she is now climbing folks. She is literally over the 200 with our nine day SMA coming up behind her. Everything is starting to turn up. Volume was very strong today. Osculators, all of them look great. PPO, percentage price osculator, a lot like your MACD. You read it the same. You got that blue line above the pink line, both going up. The difference between the two, your MACD uses a full price. The percentage price osculator, ooh, you're quick. That's right, uses a percentage of the price. And then our RSI, it's kind of leveled out here. It's just going sideways, sideways, which isn't dangerous. And she is warm, very warm. She's up there at 64 right now. Taking a look at our one hour, 20 day view. Whew. Well, she's all over the place with volatility. But look, if I put my line here, you can see she's just going sideways the hard way. Now, what's interesting here is our 200 is flat. 
Actually, it's climbing a little bit up here, but our price is falling way deep down here. Once the price crossed over and got on top of the 200 day haul, it started using the 200 haul to jump off of. She jumped here up on top of the 50, rolled on that 50, fell back down, pushed off of the 200 haul again. This time she pushed herself to and through the 200 day MA. Now she's come back down to our 200 haul. She's riding that, crosses the 200 MA with it, gets excited. Now I can't explain what all of this is about, but what I can tell you is we're in a serious breakout right here. Our 200 day SMA fell, got level right here yesterday, and right now it is starting to turn up. And it was yesterday she started this big push, tapping that resistance up there at 78 cents. The one above that coming off of our Fibonacci is at 86 cents. Then we've got one at $1.08 and $1.26. As you can see, she is floating on that nine day SMA, not even coming below it. No weight to her. She's floating right now, telling us she's still climbing. And looking at our other SMAs, our 50, climbing, pushing over the 200. Our 20 just crossed over, and here comes our 200 haul crossing. Anytime a smaller SMA crosses the 200, it's extra push, extra power onto the price climb. Our oscillators on our hourly chart are outstanding. Every single one of them pushing up strong and hard and on fire. Our RSI is up there at 72. I like an overbought RSI. Coming down to our five day, five minute. So she was dropping here. You can see her 200 day SMA. It's not hard, but it is drooping downhill. She fell down to this low bubble of 55 cents, got up on top of the 200, has been negotiating it, waiting for our SMAs to get in place. And right here, when all of our SMA started to turn up, that's when she took off. She jumped up onto that nine day, going from about 58 cents up to 75 cents today, fell back, came down through a lot of SMAs here. And it looks like she's just hanging in midair there. I don't believe it. I'm going back to the 15 minute chart to see if she's sitting on anything. Yeah. See, she's not dangling. She's resting. <laughs> she's resting on this 20 day SMA here. Once she got up on top, right at the end of the day, she had a jump from 66 cents up to 71. After market, she came back down and jumped again up to 72 cents. She's fallen back down very firmly on our 20 day SMA and back to climbing. All of our SMAs are in beautiful position. Volume was strong today, got strong at the end of the day. 200 day SMA is climbing. Our PPO is climbing. Our MACD just had a crossover. It is now climbing. And we've got a special bonus here. If you watch my videos, you know what I'm talking about. My PPO is climbing up. My blue line is going up. My ADX, my red line is going down. As long as those two are separating, guaranteed your price is going up 100%. And the neat thing is, is if you're looking for an exit, you want to get out as soon as she stops climbing, watch those two lines. If either one of those lines change direction, it doesn't matter which side, which way. If they change direction, your climb has stopped. Now, it doesn't mean it's falling. It just isn't climbing anymore. You may want to pay attention to it then. So I like the chart set up, especially on the long chart. She is set up righteously. The other charts are showing heat. They're not as hot, but they look good. We do have an offset date for this closing of August 20th, but it could be any time sooner than that. And they're in hot water until October 14th. We've got to get the price up over a dollar and they got to get the market cap up over 35 million. So there's a lot of things going on right now. Catalysts are a little stale, but they still have heat in them. So I'm thinking this is worth a watch. She is showing activity right now. Now in saying that I have a lot of people, not a lot, but enough who write me three, four five months after I cover a stock and they say, guess you were wrong about this one or how do you feel about it now? Well, you know, I'm not looking at these stocks three, four, five months down the road. I'm a day trader. I'm looking for stocks that are going to move one, two, three days from now. 
Now, of course, I do like stocks that have potential to grow down the road, and I'll tell you if they are. But the reason we're looking at it is to make money now in the next few days. So I don't know where this is going to go down the road, but right now, I think it deserves to be on your watch list. It's on mine. And just to let you know, this has a warrant. I do believe we just add two W's to this, MMVWW. Yes, this is the warrant for the company. Uh, yesterday, the warrant was down at uh, about four cents. She took a rip. Wow. She took a rip after market yesterday to 27 cents. Holy cow. Six. That's like six to 700 percent run right there. Then she came back down. She landed on her 50 day SMA here. She was riding that nicely, but she's crouched. Now you see, I've got an order in up here because I own the warrant. I was very upset because I had an order in here. I had what they call good till canceled plus extended hours, which means anytime the market is open, I am available to sell. My order did not go off. I don't know why. I am really <laughs> upset about that. I have it set at 100% uh, gains. I bought them at 11 cents. I don't remember when. Maybe back in May. I don't know. And I had my gains. She just didn't pop for me. So I'm hanging around to still get my 100% off my warrants. Right now, she is taking a dip. She's coming down here. But here's the thing you need to realize, folks. Warrants run whenever there's good news or the stock starts moving. They are normally at about 10% of the price of the stock. Normally. This was at $0.07 cents earlier today when the stock was around $0.70. Cents. Well, it doesn't always stay that tightly related. When the stock starts running, and let's say it's doing 20%, it's having a great day, 20% up, the warrant can be up 200% or 500%. It can even go thousands of percent, folks. So this is why I like warrants because they move hard and fast on little volume. While the stock is moving on 25 million shares, the warrant's moving on 50,000 shares, 100,000 shares, and got hundreds of percent gains. Now, the one thing I do want to key you in on when you are trading warrants, you can buy them and sell them just like stock. The difference between a warrant and a common stock is a warrant comes with extra benefits. It's a coupon. It allows you to buy a share like three or five years down the road at a discounted guaranteed price. Maybe it's for a buck fifty. It says anytime in the next three to five years, you can buy a share for a buck fifty, regardless of what the price is. Stock could be thirty dollars three years from now. All you got to do is give them a warrant and a buck fifty, and you can get one of those thirty dollars shares. And you just made a lot of money. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just trade it as a stock. Well, when you go to sell it, be very aware of the ask and the bid. The reason these move quick is because there's not a lot of liquidity. The volume is popcorn. It's off and on, off and on, which gets the spread on the ask and the bid to be quite wide. It might go from $0.04 cents to $0.12. Cents. Big. And it'll jump all of a sudden from $0.04 cents to $0.12, cents, just like that. And you go, whoa, I just made 300% gains. And you go to sell. And if you don't look, you didn't notice that the bid didn't change. It still says $0.04, cents, even though it's at $0.12. Cents. What it takes is a couple more buys. And they don't have to be $0.12, cents, as long as they're above 4. Maybe it's 6, maybe it's 8, 10, or 12. The next couple of bids will then kick it up. That's the price you can probably sell for. So be very cautious. When you get eager to sell, don't be so fast that you don't look at the ask and the bid. You might end up selling for exactly what you got in for and be really upset for that. There you go, folks. A lot of information, but it's not all of it. Go do some more due diligence. There's not a lot on the OTC site, but there are a few articles out there that you can get tidbits of extra information on. Just put in the company's name and put it in Google. See what you get. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate you showing up. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.